What's going on everyone? Today we are gonna to talk about how to start your own adult daycare business, the first seven steps you should take. But first, like, comment, subscribe, hit the little button, hit the little like, the little bell, Just the bell click, because then every time I post, you get to hear from me. Isn't that great? Like, don't you want to do that? Okay, just do it. My name is Chris Shane. I'm the founder and CEO of ActiveAge Daytime Senior Care. Today, we're going to want the first seven steps to take when opening your very own adult daycare business. And number one is you want to make sure you understand your options. What do you want to do? Do you want to BYOB, build your own business? You know, do you want to start from scratch? Do you want to start your very own adult daycare and start it, you know, from the very beginning from scratch? Or do you want to explore the franchise route. And if you do, like, I, I actually, I know somebody. I know a guy. <laughs> I know a guy. He's, he's right here. I'll be happy, happy to, I'll be happy to talk franchising with you. Shameless little plug. Okay, number three is, do you want to purchase an existing adult daycare center, right? So you can build your own, you could look at franchise options, or you could purchase an existing one, right? So you gotta ask yourself that question, which one of those three is mo more important to you? Number two, type of adult daycare. What type of adult daycare do you want to open? Is it going to be primarily focused on private pay? Is it going to be primarily focused on Medicaid and grants and different, you know, different like uh, kind of payer sources out there? Or is it going to be a for-profit or a non-profit? Are you going to try to raise funds, get donations, apply for grants? or are you gonna be a for-profit business? Are you gonna focus on young adult or are you gonna focus on seniors? Are you gonna focus on providing and creating a social care model or a medical care model that might have other healthcare components that you might be able to bill for? So you have to ask yourself, okay, so then you go through that list. Okay, I said four things, right? For-profit, non-profit, social, medical, private pay, Medicaid. Young adult, senior. So just go ahead and make a little circle on that little list and you can identify the type of adult daycare you want to create, right? And you know, a lot of that then too would depend on like the size, you know, that that would help you identify like what size, right? I was talking about the size in number two when I should have been talking about the size in number three, which is conduct market research. This right here is going to actually be the step where you figure out what size. Conduct market research. Make sure you go into your local market and find out, do the demographics make sense? Is there a high enough density in the area that I'm looking at to support an adult daycare center? So do you, you know, are there enough people over the ages of 65 that are gonna need your services that are in this area, okay? So if you put a dot on a map, how many people over the age of 65 are within that, you know, three mile ring and that five mile ring? You know, and are you in an area that's going to be accessible? Like, are people going to be, is, is it going to be on their way to something? Or are you way off in the boondocks? These are questions you need to ask yourself. So what does your market look like? Is it very dense or is it sparsely populated? That might have a big effect on whether or not adult daycare makes sense or whether or not you should open a 2,000 or a 4,000 or a six or an eight or a 10,000 square foot center. That's going to have a big effect on it. Number four, licensing. What is your state licensing requirements? Do you even have to get licensed? Some states don't even require a license. Other states might be more restrictive and require all sorts of licensing hoops. You know, I guarantee you, California probably has a lot of requirements. But then you go to states like Tennessee and they don't have any requirements, you know? I mean, they might, I don't know, I'm just saying. The reality is that some states are not, other states will. It's gonna just depend a lot on how your state regulates adult daycare. Number five is location. Where do you wanna be? Do you wanna be in a strip mall? Do you want to lease a space? Do you wanna purchase a building? Do you wanna be part of a standalone building? How, you know, where is, you know, what, what is the ideal location? Is it in a retail shopping plaza or is it in an industrial park? Identifying those things is gonna be very important because you know, a big thing too is if you lease versus purchase, if you lease, you probably have a much lower startup cost. If you if you purchase, you might have a much more expensive startup cost because you're gonna be financing the purchase of the actual building and the land and those other things that come along with it. Whereas if you lease, you might be able to get and negotiate in a way that might be more advantageous to you. Number six, 
our projection. So based on the market research and the size of the location and whether or not you're gonna go with Medicaid or private pay or what area you're gonna focus on and whether or not you're gonna purchase or you're gonna go with the franchise route or you're gonna build your own, all of those things, right? On those first five little topics or categories or I don't know, what do you call them? The first five. <laughs> first five steps. <laughs> Thanks, Trey. These first five steps, okay? So we've like gone through these first five steps and we've identified these things for ourselves, which is going to help us create projections. Okay, what is it gonna cost? Is it, you know, so if you're going with a franchise, it might be a franchise fee. If you're purchasing an existing adult daycare center, it might just be more expensive. You know, do you have those funds? And if not, you know, like do you, can you qualify for financing, right? But you gotta know what are your projections? right? You got to know how much can I afford today? How much money do I have to put into this business? How much is it going to cost me to, you know, start from go from day one to month 24? Like, what is the cost of that going to be? At what point in time am I going to become profitable? Because I get because just just a little tip here. If you think you're going to be profitable on month one, think again. <laughs> okay. I would say, especially if this is your first time going about it, I just, just plan that you won't even cross the black or get into the, uh, what do you call that? The, you know, get out of the red and into the black. You want that won't even happen until maybe month 12 to 18. Yep. I know. It's crazy. It's a lot. I know. Totally get it. You're like, really? That long? Yep. 12 to 18 months if you've never done it before. Because the reality is you don't even know what you don't know, but you want to pro make projections that are going to be very, very conservative because it's going to help you understand, okay, worst, 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 worst case, case scenario. Because we know when you're starting a business, you're optimistic. But when you think about the worst case scenario, what's it going to be? What amount of money would you potentially have to spend to start the business and to carry the carrying cost of that business until it becomes profitable. That's gonna be very, very important. Okay, so you create a worst case scenario, create a best case scenario. And then last but not least, at least now you know how much money you're gonna to need to open and how much money you're gonna need in working capital and how much money you're gonna potentially need for you know, furniture and fixtures and equipment. You know, so you created all that stuff. And if you haven't already, I have a ton of videos out there that talk about like the different startups and the different costs and we kind of break down like startup costs and furniture and fixture costs and kind of like ongoing working capital costs. We kind of break all those things down for you. But the reality of it is, is now after you've gone through all these things, you've created those projections. Now you know how much money you need and now you can go and explore your funding options and you can figure out, okay, do I get an SBA loan? Do I have money in my 401k? Can I pull money out of my 401k and use what they call a ROBS? A rollover, something, something, something. Okay, it's called Rob's. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, you can take your money in your 401k and you can roll it over tax-free without incurring any penalties to use it to invest in your startup. And that could help you with the down payment and you could still qualify for the SBA loan. So there's you know, some different ways there. You can potentially pull equity out of your house. You can use credit cards. Don't recommend that. I've done it before, but it's not <laughs> probably not a safe bet. <laughs> you know, 23% on a credit card is really not that smart, but hey, you know what? I'm not advising you to do it. I'm just saying I've done it and I'm still here. And I survived. And those credit cards are paid off now. <laughs> so anyways, so these are really are the first kind of seven steps that you should take into consideration before starting your adult daycare business. And of course, there's tons of steps after this, but let's just start with the first seven. And this is a great starting point. This will really kind of help you identify the type of adult daycare you're trying to, you're trying to create, the cost, if you, it's even possible for you, or if you need to start you know, a side hustle and start stacking away cash, doing DoorDash or doing Uber or something like that to save up for this dream of yours to open your very own adult daycare. So I hope this was helpful, guys. I know it was a little long, but you know, at the end of the day, it's very important to do this kind of self-assessment, you know, ask yourself these questions, take the time to really think about and write out these different seven steps, you know, and, 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 and do the work to make sure that you're not just going about this without the you know, appropriate preparation. I think there's a lot of 
were appropriate preparations. <laughs> Say that 10 times as fast. Anyways, guys, I would love to help you start your very own adult daycare center. You can go to adcpro.com to learn more. We got content on our YouTube channel um, on you know financing to startup stages to marketing to operations. We also do a monthly webinar and we have a private Facebook group. So make sure you join that. If you're interested in learning more about the franchise concept, I would be happy to introduce you to that guy. <laughs> His name is Chris Channa. Myself, I know, kind of weird talking to the third person. Awkward, I know, I get it. So activeagecare.com forward slash franchise. Go there if you'd like to learn more about the franchising side. Otherwise, I'll see you on adcpro.com. Thank you guys so much for joining me. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me. If you'd like to learn how to open your own adult daycare center, go to adcpro.com. If you'd like the latest business tips, click here. And make sure you subscribe to our channel. Click here. We'll see you guys next time.